Hey everybody, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. This is my 101st video and I'm going to switch things up a little bit on you today. Normally, I'm doing tips and tricks videos, I'm doing haul videos, I'm doing product reviews, those sorts of things. But we need to switch gears here tonight because there's something really important coming down the pike from the United States Supreme Court by the end of June that all resellers need to know about. So this video is sort of an educational video, which many of my other ones are as well. But it, more importantly, it's a call to action video in which I need you to go down below to the description section and click on the petition that you're going to see there and make sure that you sign it and send it off at least literally will take you probably less than 30 seconds. But before you obviously sign anything, you need to know what the heck it is that you're signing and why you should sign something. And this is really important if you're a reseller. Every reseller needs to pay attention to this story and follow it uh, as the weeks unfold here because uh, again, what I'm going to tell you about the major, major implications for you. So basically what's going on is that the state of South Dakota is trying to get the United States Supreme Court to overturn their own precedent from 1992, which is known as the Quill precedent, which prevents uh, companies from having to collect sales tax from people who make purchases from them who do not reside in the state that they have a physical location in. So for example, Primetime Treasure Headquarters which you're looking at part of it right now is located in the state of New York. So when somebody makes a purchase from South Carolina, South Dakota, North Dakota, Hawaii, California, you name the state besides New York, but any other state, I do not have to collect sales tax on that. Okay. However, if somebody makes a purchase in the state of New York, I do have to collect sales tax, whether, sales tax, whether or not they live in Syracuse, which is where I'm located, or New York City, or Buffalo, or Binghamton, or Rochester, it doesn't matter. I have to collect sales tax, and then I need to send it in to the state of New York every quarter. If you don't do that, you are eventually going to get in trouble. So if you're watching this and this is something that you're not doing, you have to sign up and register with the state to collect these taxes. And then you, you know, you, you could, most states, you could do this online. You just send in the, you know, hold on to the, the tax money and then you just send it in every quarter and you're set. Okay. So, um, but so that that's fine. That's okay for, for, for a small business owner to manage that when you're just dealing with your own state. Now, there's one technical exception to this. What I'm telling you is that if you uh, do something like Amazon FBA, um, fulfillment by Amazon, where you're shipping your merchandise out and they store it in some location, like let's say Oregon or something like that, and then someone from Oregon purchases something from, from you, you technically have to collect in that state as well. But besides that one exception, you do not have to collect sales tax and vice versa. The person who lives in that other state doesn't have to pay sales tax if they make an out of state uh, purchase. Now, from the state's perspective, like South Dakota, they're obviously upset because they feel like that they are losing out. And it's true. It's not like a feeling. It really is true. They, they are not collecting that sale. They're not getting that sales tax sent to them. So they're, for example, South Dakota is saying that they're losing like $50 million in, you know, in, in sales tax revenue, for example. Uh, so you could throw out all sorts of different large numbers, but the bottom line is, is that, you know, many states are complaining that they are not getting the amount of sales tax that they should get because people are making these out of state purchases. Now let's go back to, well, why is it called the quill decision? And why was this restriction put in place in the first place that allowed online businesses to do this? Well, there was a company named the Quill Corporation, and back in the day, what they were doing is they were they were a computer software program and they uh, program company, and they were located in Delaware, and they were basically sending out flyers and catalogs and mailers and making telephone calls to people to pitch their products and sell their products, and so people from South Dakota, which by the way, South Dakota does not have any income tax, so they are more reliant on sales tax to run government. 
Um, so you could kind of understand their perspective a little better than maybe some other states that you know do have a high income tax and high sales tax. But regardless, they were upset that people were making purchases from uh, from this company and not having to pay sales tax on it. And so they sued uh, to get uh, this company, Quilt Corp, to send them um, the, the, the tax money that they felt um, that, they, that they owed them. And ultimately, the United St States Supreme Court said, uh, no, we're not going to do that. There is a, um, a, a basically a commerce clause. It's known as um, the, the dormant uh, commerce uh, clause that basically prevents um, states from doing anything that's going to interfere with interstate commerce. So uh, as a result of that, uh, they basically uh, said that this, the states can't, can't force this issue in which they would be able to make places that don't have a physical location um, to, to collect the, this uh, sales tax. Now, the state of South, uh, South Dakota, sorry, South Dakota, did try to argue that because the company had their merchandise, like their computer software uh, uh, items and merchandise located within the state, that that was enough to establish a physical presence in the state. But the United States Supreme Court did not buy that and said that doesn't count. Sorry. It has to be that the business itself is physically located there. The fact that mail is coming across doesn't constitute what's known as a substantial nexus or a substantial enough connection to be able to collect that sales tax. So that's important for you to remember. So um, there have been challenges to this over the years and they have all uh, failed in lower courts. However, there have been arguments about this in the Supreme Court. And uh, Supreme Court Justice Justice Kennedy, who is often known as a swing vote on the court. In other words, you have nine justices, four vote for one thing, four vote for the other thing, and Justice Kennedy tends to be the one that comes across and basically decides the case. So, he has indicated over the years that he thinks that the Quill uh, decision is outdated uh, because now we live in a society where there are many more online purchases and online businesses compared to what was going on when the Quill decision was passed in 1992 when you didn't really have uh, much by way of kind of internet businesses or anything like that. Uh, and so the, you got to understand the way things work like this when, when companies hear that, like brick and mortar companies hear that, they basically in their mind say, okay, well, we're going to try to come up with a way to get a case in front of the Supreme Court so Anthony Kennedy could make a decision in our favor. So what did they do? South Dakota basically created a law that would force any, and this was in 2016 that they did this. So South Dakota created a law in which they would basically force any company that made $100,000 in sales or, or more or 200 uh, plus transactions to, ha uh, to have to collect uh, sales tax and send it into the, uh, into the state of uh, South Dakota. And they tried to uh, go after certain companies like Wayfair, for example, to get that um, tax money and Wayfair uh, fought back and it wasn't just Wayfair, it was companies like uh, Overstock.com uh, and there were some other ones uh, as well. Um, there was a Newegg was another one and basically um, they were basically uh, challenging um, uh, you know, and fighting back against uh, South Dakota's attempt to collect this money. And again, the lower courts supported Wayfair and these other companies. They were not supporting uh, South, uh, South Dakota, but South Dakota wound up appealing it and it got in front of the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court basically said, we agree to hear the case. Now, you could listen to some of the oral arguments uh, online. Uh, I will link to that down below as well so you could hear the oral arguments. I did listen to some of the oral arguments. I didn't hear the entire thing. It's about an hour long. Um, but the justices are kind of going back and forth. Some are hesitant to overturn it. Some look like they want to overturn it. Uh, many people think that uh, the Quill decision will be overturned. And I don't know, I mean, there have been many cases before where people have tried to predict how the United States Supreme Court is going to come down, and I'm no better at able, being able to predict this or not. Uh, my guess would be that they 
won't overturn it, but uh, there are others who think that they will. It's really anybody's guess. You know, I won't, I guess, com be completely surprised no matter what happens. Um, but obviously, we as resellers don't want it to be overturned because, again, it's going to create a logistic nightmare for us if what they are going to try to require us to do as individual resellers or small businesses is to register with every state and keep track and keep a log of all of the different people that purchased to us from every state because you have to know the sales tax for every single state and if you want to get really technical the sales tax also varies by county um, in many instances so uh, there would be a mind-boggling amount of things to keep track of and um, it's just not going to work for a lot of people so if this ultimately does get overturned uh, I cannot imagine that it would be the way I just described it because if it did, it would be a complete disaster. But you never know when the government gets involved in things like this, how much of a disaster they could turn things into. So uh, I think really what would have to happen is that a company like eBay, for example, who is fighting against this, and they put a petition together down below to sign, to send off to the courts. I think they have to get a million or more signatures or something to get it in front of the court so the court looks at it and considers it. And they will easily get that because there's so many people that... Um, you know, that, 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 that sell on eBay and use eBay. And it's not just something that's important for sellers, it's important for buyers because buyers like to go online and make tax-free purchases. Now, as you might imagine, brick and mortar companies, they're totally supportive of um, South Dakota and they want this to be uh, overturned. They want this decision to be overturned um, because you know, they feel, and that rightly so, it will allow them to be more competitive with online businesses. So you could understand both perspectives. Everyone's going to come at it from their own way. I mean, I'm sure if I ran a brick and mortar company, uh, I'd probably want uh, the uh, Wayfair, um, you know, Wayfair to lose on this. But as somebody who has a vested interest in reselling online and not wanting to have a complete logistic nightmare of having to collect sales tax from every state. I obviously would like things to stay the way that they are. And many buyers are going to want that also, again, because costs are going to go up 100%, no matter what happens uh, with regards to what system they put in place. If this gets overturned, guaranteed, your prices as a buyer, if you're not a seller, you're a buyer watching this, your prices are 100% going to go up. There's no two ways about that. So if you don't want that either as a buyer, then you also should just sign the petition. You have to enter your name, your address, and um, I don't think there's too much else, maybe an email address, I think, uh, and that's pretty much it. So um, go down below and, uh, and, and sign that petition. It is really, really, really important. If you like this video, I don't only want you to just hit the like button. What I want you to do is I want you to take this video and I want you to share it and pass it around. There's going to be other resellers who are going to make videos like this. Um, I know Casey the Rockstar Flipper uh, made one like this as well. And as many people as possible who have networks, no matter how big they are, no matter how small they are, need to get the message out. So as resellers, we all need to kind of band together to put this out there. So thanks to Casey for doing this and other people need to do it as well. Spread the message. We need to get as many people to sign that petition as possible because the more numbers you know there are strength in numbers and people do listen to that so um you know that can have some influence so get that message out there make sure you subscribe to this channel if you feel like uh, this was something useful for you to hear a useful explanation kind of made things a little bit easier for you in terms of wrapping your uh, mind around the issue a little bit and um, you know you want to come back and see more videos i would appreciate that uh, also if you have a comment whether or not it's you agreeing with this perspective or disagreeing that's fine leave it down below i know you know as i said earlier there's arguments that obviously could be made on both sides of it um, I'm not going to bash anyone for having a different perspective, um, but again, I'm just telling you my perspective and the obvious reasons for why I have the perspective that I do on this. So uh, with that, I have got to do some more listings and I've got to get some items out. So uh, I'm going to get going here, but uh, I'll see you back at the next video, which hopefully will be a little bit lighter, a little more fun. All right, take care.